There we are. We are live. Hello. How are you doing, guys? How are you doing, Jess? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Uh, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to you too. And yeah. to anyone that's watching that celebrates Eid. Yeah. I wish you a prosperous time. We could be we could be feasting right now, which is what I think what they, they do on Eid, don't right? Oh, yes. But instead, we're, we're feasting, we're providing you with a feast of crypto content. Oh, that was a nice little turn just, in that you did there. It just came to me. It just came to me. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's Eid. It was the uh, it's the first day of Eid today. Yes. Uh, and here in Dubai, it is very quiet. It's really quiet. I think we're the only building in operation in the only office in operation in the building. We can see a lovely ocean view with lots of people on boats having a dandy time. Mm -hmm. so yes. Yeah. And it's pretty quiet on the roads actually for once, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a change. It is it is very quiet here. Um, it's a bit like, I guess, a bit like Christmas back in the UK. Yeah. There's not much going on. But it's also strange because next week is going to be really busy because next week there is a huge round of crypto conferences in Dubai. So everyone's organizing when they're coming in, what kind of meetings are going to be going on, um, which is the big shebang. Have you not got your microphone I on? I realized I wasn't wearing my microphone. This is the difference between me and Guy. If I didn't have my microphone on, you guys would not be able to hear a thing. But the, the vocal cords you have, sir, are excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's, uh, no one was complaining about not being able to hear me. Um, anyhow, I hope that sounds a little clear. I'm probably booming in your ears now, so apologies for that. Um, yeah, as Jess said, uh, next week is it's just kicking off, isn't it? Yes. All of crypto is in town next week. Um, it should be fun. Token twenty forty nine. Yeah, we are going to be going to that at some point, and then doing going to various sort of side events. Yeah, I would say, guys, if you're not yet following us on Instagram, make sure to do so and Twitter because that's all we'll be posting the content of who we're meeting and where we're meeting them in real time, and then the videos. I think will come shortly after, yeah. but the agenda is looking pretty pretty good so far. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to looking forward to meeting and chatting with a whole uh, a whole lot of people in crypto. Yeah. It should be lots of fun. Always nice to always nice to kind of take this IRL. Yes, isn't it? and also it's just nine days before the halving. It is. I think yeah. we have a countdown. It's nine days and nine hours before the next Bitcoin halving. It's going to be at one forty two in the morning on Saturday night. Which one of the team members do you think are most likely to be awake during halving to celebrate? Is that going to be is that going to be one forty two in the evening uh, golf time? Yes. If it's our time, no way, no way. I will do it. I volunteer as tribute. Okay. Sponsored by D four. <laughs> <laughs> that will be quite a party, I'm sure. Um, okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, we've got some wonderful comments already. Uh, Pranit says, "Guy, your beard looks cool." I know. Thank you. Um, sorry, nothing, nothing for you, Jez. Um, uh, you could hear me just fine, apparently. Uh, Ada Lovelace, um, love working from home as it means I can always catch this awesome show. Hello from Finsbury Park. Hello, Good Ada old Lovelace. Finsbury Park. I had a, I had a great. The last time I was in Finsbury Park, I went to Rowan's Bowling Alley, and I love Rowan's Bowling Alley. Sorry, but I did not think that was your scene. That is so much fun. Yeah, they did a they did a Big Lebowski theme night there many well not many years ago, a few years What's ago. Big Lebowski. Uh, one of my favorite films. It's a film all about bowling. Oh. Oh, okay. And that, amongst other things. Because it's like a hip hop club with bowling alleys inside. It's it's got everything. <laughs> it's got everything. Folks, if you're ever going to London, if you're if you're going to London to check it out and you're thinking of going and seeing the sights, you know, the Tower of London, Big Ben, all that sort of stuff, forget it. Rowan's bowling alley in Finsbury Park, right next to the station. That that is London. I didn't realise we had so much in common, guy. Next there we are. time, you, me, Mrs. Guy, let's go karaoke there as well is also a vibe. Yep. Yeah, That's it's exciting. like I say, it's got it all. Anyhow, um, we've talked quite a lot about uh, about all things other than crypto. Um, Muhammad Muhammad is uh, up to his usual tricks. First of all, he's in Wales, uh, and now he's claiming to be in Manchester, Saudi Arabia. He's all over the place. We've got other people uh, joining us from Serbia, from Melbourne, uh, from Manchester, where it's raining, apparently. Who would have thought it? Uh, from Tipperary, uh, Will Music says, Happy Eid. Thank you. Um, uh, Eid Mubarak. Um, we got uh, people joining us uh, from Eid Mubarak from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, hello from a still wintry West Wales. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I'll wish you some sunshine. <laughs> Send some sunshine their way. We've got plenty to spare here. Although it is actually a bit cloudy yeah, today, isn't it? It is. But it's still still 30 plus degrees outside, which I always find a bit weird. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. 
Um, okay, uh, so uh, Pranit says, ahoy, uh, hello, Panda. Um, uh, we've got people joining us from Tokyo, from Swansea. There's two sides of the globe, isn't it? Um, hello from Paiman Patch in Stroud. Wow. Um, from Ghana, from Jersey, um, from uh, Kurdistan. Um, uh, Ada loves Rowan's. There we are. Ada, you'll have to come with us to, yeah. to Rowan's when we when we hit that place next time, as we surely will. Um, uh, Patrick says, you don't know the Big Lebowski, Jess. I feel so old, I'm going to cry. I don't, yeah, just don't get me started. The Big Lebowski is a wonderful film. I will put it on my watch list. But it's, yeah, I suppose it is it, probably a little before your time. Um, oh, Red Panda Pie says my beard looks good too. Thank you, Red Panda Pie. I've been working on it for months now. That is that is so kind of you, Red Panda Pie. Um, uh, Robert Chu, I hate the Eagles. Yes, uh, Big Lebowski. Uh, everyone, everyone who's got a Big Lebowski quote, drop it in the comments right away. That will make my day. Uh, Chile is joining us from Inglewood, California. Uh, we've got people joining from Belgium, Lugano, Essex, Essex, Canada. I didn't know there was an Essex, oh. Canada. Turkey bro. Uh, Belgium, New Zealand, Namaste from India, somewhere in East Anglia. Arthur, are you are you lost? Have you just sort of stumbled into East Anglia by accident? Hello from Iceland. Hello from sunny Brighton. Um, Chewa has a question. <laughs> Jessica, does the Binance perfume smell like a bull after beating the giant bear? Yes, it smells like many leather-bound books, and it smells <laughs> like a rich library of delight. <laughs> Nothing to do with Bigfoot, as you smells... rudely mentioned in the... <laughs> Twitter video if you guys saw. Smells like rich mahogany. It is a beautiful looking box. I actually, I might go and get it in a minute to show yeah. you all. Maybe Zara, yeah. our woman behind the scenes, will go and get it. We can show you all. Yeah. Go do a little smell of crypto. Binance, yeah. Binance perfume. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought? That was, wasn't that for International Women's Day, which was. Yes. But it was like a little bit weeks late. Ago. It was a little bit it late. It takes time to make such a delicious scent, guy. <laughs> I'll show you all just so you can have a little look. This is one of the perks of working in crypto, folks. You get sent stuff like crypto by Binance. You get sent things that you don't really necessarily need. Mm, or didn't know that you needed. We didn't know we needed it. But I'll pop yeah. this here for the video. Just... Yeah. Yeah, I'll just, I, I'm, I'm going to give it a sniff again because it's Okay, been a while. one thing you need to know, if you ever do end up working in the Coin Bureau office, because we're always open to new crypto talent, Guy will just randomly throughout the day spray his oud <laughs> perfume so pungent around the office and it sometimes will bring on a migraine that's, not all the time but sometimes that's that's quite nice that that's is quite, quite nice this I'm, is a, I'm nice. a fan i'm a fan one spray as well that's pretty modest <laughs> <laughs> uh shaka zulu says i am a walrus there there is there i'm yeah there's some great big lebowski quotes coming there um the rug really tied the room together fantastic okay Let's stop talking about the Big Lebowski and all that sort of stuff. What are we going to talk about today, Jess? We have lots to cover. We're taking a look at some of the leading cryptos and some interesting announcements that might be coming out. So we've got Tonquin is on the list, Tether is on the list for two different reasons. Sui, because Sui Basecamp is going on in Paris at we've the We've got moment. to call it Sui. 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 Old habits die hard. Sorry, mm. thank you. Sui. And Sui. some news from Arthur Hayes. Hong Kong and a potential spot Bitcoin ETF, which is pretty interesting mm -hmm. um, and much more besides. But we're starting by taking a little look at Americans owning crypto. Yes. Yes. This is something I saw. I should say as well, um, we're just we're kind of I think the CPI is due. Um, uh, I think it's just come out, actually. So mm. I, I don't know. We'll uh, I'll, I'll try and find out what that is in a moment. Yeah. Um, but yes, this was a survey uh, that was conducted by Policy Genius. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who they are, but they surveyed 4,000 Americans, apparently. And it revealed that 20% of Americans under 42, so that's like millennials and Gen Z, 20% yeah. uh, uh, of Americans under 42 own crypto. Not bad. Not a bad statistic. Yeah. So uh, apparently 10% of American Gen Xers mm -hmm. own crypto. So what Gen X is the next one up from millennial, isn't it? So that's up to 1982, up to 1980. Um, and only 5% of boomers. Boomers, never going to make it. Once again, boomers just <laughs> letting the side down and spoiling it for everyone else. Well done, boomers. Um, and apparently Gen Z Americans are more likely to own crypto than stocks. Oh. Yeah. 
I am not surprised at that actually. And I would say, and maybe that's because we're on the crypto side of things. Mm -hmm. But when I was working at Bitpanda Exchange, we were really trying, they were launching their stock, fractional stock investing in 2021. And it was like, how do we make stock investing as sexy as crypto? And it was a conversation that we had multiple times per week. Because okay. Crypto is just a little bit more jazzy. You feel like you're in a tech revolution. Stocks, it's not as it's not as jazzy. Maybe I'm, I'm biased because we're in the space. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you know crypto, it's sort of normal to see 10, 20, 30 percent in a day. Yeah. Uh, and stocks, you might be lucky if you get that over a decade. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, you can kind of see where, where the appeal is, isn't it? And you're um, investing in the Bitcoin network, the future ecosystem, not just BTC. So there's a little bit more of a part of the, the cat plan, you know, absolutely. United Forces. And I also read as well, so crypto ownership is on par with real estate ownership for millennials and Gen Zers. And mm. I think it also leads to, as you've mentioned, CPI is coming out today, the kind of state of the US economy at present with interest rates means people are, it's a little bit tougher for people to get on board the property ladder and crypto might be a more accessible investment opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to some people. So um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was asked just to do a call with a friend's uh, ad agency mm -hmm. and talk to some of them about crypto. And a few of them were kind of asking questions. They were like, you know, why, why do people why do people invest in crypto? Okay. And one of the reasons I gave was that, you know, this is a this is an asset class where you have a genuine chance of you know making an enormous return. And there are so many people out there for whom things like owning a home, even just owning like a car, yeah. has become pretty unrealistic. Apparently, 99% uh, of Americans, uh, a home is now, owning your own home is now unaffordable for 99% of Americans, wow. which is just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so crypto gives you that opportunity. And I was like, there is, there is probably the best reason why mm -hmm. people own crypto. You know, before yeah. you get to the underlying fundamentals, before you get to the value proposition of Bitcoin or anything like that, the fact is, it can give you it can give you the opportunity to make the sort of return, you know, to make kind of life changing returns. And that's that's enough reason for many people. As Arthur Hayes would say, Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of Arthur Hayes, um, yeah. he has been he's been sounding off, hasn't he? He has. He What's has he been, been giving a little bit of an indication that we could see a post halving slump in crypto prices. And he is normally very strong with his opinions on whether he's waving the bull flag. So it's interesting to see him on the other side of the park waving the bear flag. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that the halving will likely induce a lot of BTC holders to take profits. This is something that we have spoke about quite a lot on the channel. And we have talked about possibly seeing a late May to early June sell off. And there are a few videos on the main channel if you do want to go and take a look. Mm -hmm. um, so as apparently Arthur is not planning to trade until May, okay. which for him, because as you guys know, he is the kind of king of altcoins. When we had him on the channel, he was also avidly speaking about meme coins and his active um, investments there. And he's saying that from May onwards, liquidity is going to be released into the system. And that, of course, is ahead of the U.S. elections that we'll be seeing in November. Um, so it'll have to be interesting to see. And I kind of am thinking, is he taking on a little bit of a Warren Buffett strategy at the moment with sitting on big piles of crypto and then just waiting to dive on in and reallocate when the markets are looking a little bit more appealing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it, it sounds like being Arthur Hayes is quite a nice life, isn't it? Tough one. You <laughs> wake up, trade some mean coins, then go ski for a little bit. Trying to book in the interview with the fantastic mind that is Arthur Hayes was difficult because... Arthur's skiing in Japan, yeah. Arthur's skiing in Switzerland. I'm like, okay, well, I'm in the office whenever he's available. <laughs> Y'all just let me know. So busy off living his best life yes. that he doesn't have uh, doesn't have time to do to do all these sort of work related things. Yes, and he yeah. is going to be speaking at Token 2049 next week in Dubai. He's on a panel with Mr. Ralph Powell. Okay. So they'll be talking about macro meme coins and much more besides, I can imagine. Yeah, that would be a good discussion. We will uh, we will try and... Is that on the Friday? Do you That's know? on the Friday, so we ah. can go and have a little listen in and keep you guys posted. Okay, yeah. We will report from the front lines of Token 2049 um, and hopefully maybe try and get to chat to Arthur and Raoul afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we do have an interview confirmed with Raoul Pal the week afterwards, so... I think, guys, start commenting your questions now here and also in the Discord. If you tag me, I can see all of those questions um, and we can report back to you all. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Yeah, um, as Jess was saying, uh, Arthur Hayes is sort of um, looking towards a downturn post halving. Um, I think they, you know the halving is probably one of these events that if if prices are pretty inflated around that time, there could be quite a lot of profit taking around then. Um, but he seems to think that yeah, uh, this this business of liquidity drying up with the U.S.'s TGA or Treasury General account being refilled. Uh, because it was kind of emptied out, pumped into the economy, you know, over the last year or so. They're now going to refill it. And I think a lot of that is supposed to come from tax payments. Obviously, it's tax season uh, in the US at the moment. Um, so that is going to suck, uh, in Arthur's uh, opinion, that is going to suck liquidity out of the market. Mm -hmm. Obviously, crypto kind of need all markets need liquidity. Um, but yeah, ahead of that election in November, uh, the likelihood is that they will turn on the liquidity taps, pump the market so as everyone's in a good mood. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, so this bull market could be uh, about to get pretty wild, but um, you know, nothing is up only. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we could see a fair bit of volatility over the next few weeks or so, over the rest of April. Um, I should say as well, uh, crypto itself is dipped. I think it must be as a result of those uh, CPI numbers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, Bitcoin has gone down to um, well, just below sixty-eight k, which is what? which is low these days, isn't it? But, uh, this is horribly <laughs> low. This is a huge <laughs> dip. I can't barely get out of bed with it. But it is a little bit of a retracement. Yeah. Yeah. Shows how shows how much our expectations have shifted over the last few months. People are getting very upset about it dipping below seventy k. It's like. <laughs> Well, OK, fair enough. Um, so, yeah, BTC uh, just below 68K. Uh, ETH has given up some of those gains as well, um, 3.4K. Um, and yeah, Tether's market cap, $105 billion. Just saying, just saying. We're going to talk about Tether yeah. uh, in a few minutes or so. Um, but before that, Jess, what's, what's next on the on the agenda. Well, if you are, oh, you've closed off your screen. So one oh. of the cryptos that actually has been doing pretty well against the slight downward trend that we have seen is da -da -da -da, Toncoin. Toncoin yes. is at 30% on the week, ladies and gentlemen. Toncoin's been on an absolute tear. I know we've spoken about it a few times on Q&A, but my goodness, has it been moving. So obviously there was kind of discussions over the last few weeks. If you watch our news market segment, you would have seen that there was talks and speculation of um, a ton ecosystem developments and also IPO speculations for Telegram, which would in turn be kind of a positive news for Toncoin and the native Ton token with the Ton payment feature. Um, so there was a lot of news speculating around about new added utilities for Ton. Uh, Telegram channel owners now are eligible for 50% of ad revenue. So there was a lot of utility for the Ton token within the Telegram app. And the Telegram app has 900 million monthly active users. So it's a really impressive active pa pa payment platform, um, pa platform rather, especially for the likes of crypto users. Yeah. Yeah. Telegram is is one of those kind of is one of those sort of crypto native apps, isn't yeah. it? You are, if you if you're in crypto, you have to be on Telegram mm -hmm. in some way. Um, yeah, my Telegram is just full of, I'm signed up to too many Telegram channels, too many people have my Telegram. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I've actually turned Telegram notifications off. That is That's how. holistic of you. We have been speaking <laughs> off air. We said after this bull market, we think we might delete our Telegram accounts and then restart from scratch. Because if you've had Telegram since 2016, your messages are inundated. Yeah. Um, but I am starting to see a lot more on the crypto Telegram channels, a lot of advertisements pop up. So it is interesting to see that we are getting more of a revenue content creation, um, content creation scheme. So I read somewhere that public channels with at least 1,000 subscribers will benefit from this monetization scheme using Toncoin. And there is a shift there with content creation and revenue generation on okay. the messaging app. Well. If, uh, yeah, if we see sort of that, you know, that is a genuine potential use case for yeah. Toncoin. So if we see that adopted, uh, that should be very positive for it. Andrew and others are pointing out that uh, the supply of ton or ton is very centralized. Yeah. Um, you know, the top uh, the top few wallets hold an inordinate amount of supply. I mean, that is that is not uncommon in crypto, but certainly that's something that we'd like to see, uh, like to see change. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a, a bit in contrast to uh, to ADA, which Ton actually flipped, didn't it? So 
ton is now top 10 and ADA yes. has dropped to 11. I saw a lot of, lot of talk about that on Twitter. I can imagine. Um, I can't imagine. And it'll be interesting because I think we haven't seen the full announcements yet from the likes of Telegram and Toncoin. And the reason we say that is because, as we've mentioned earlier, Token 2049 is happening next week in Dubai. And Pavel Durov, who is the founder of Telegram and also the kind of the chair of the Toncoin Foundation, mm. is speaking on a panel. And it is very unheard of that Pavel will attend in-person IRL events. He's a very in-stealth mode kind of guy. He's only done... The last interview he did was to do with the speculation around the IPO. Apart from that, I think 2017 was his last press appearance. So he's a very under the radar kind mm. of dude. And his panel discussion is going to be with the CEO of Tether, Paolo Ardino. And it's just titled Announcement Main Stage. So there's a lot of room for speculation there about what that could be and what that could entail. Yeah. Yeah, is that on Friday as well? That is on. Let me double check, actually. Okay. Gosh, yeah, it's all going to be kicking it's off, all, isn't it? It's all it's happening here, guys. Token 2049. Um, yeah, so Pavel and uh, Pavel and Paolo, uh, the double act. Let's see what let's see what Telegram or Tuncoin have been cooking up with uh, with Tether. Um, speaking of Tether, uh, now I mentioned earlier uh, that Tether's uh, USDT's market cap has climbed to 105 billion dollars. I think it was $107 billion uh, uh, earlier on today when I looked, but it seems to have dropped a little bit along with the rest of crypto. Um, but there was a very interesting article. I don't know if you guys uh, follow DL News at all. It's a relatively new uh, crypto news site, um, but it's very good. But they had uh, they had spoken to uh, Paolo on the sort of fringes of Paris Blockchain Week, mm -hmm. and he was talking about Tether moving in to uh, Bitcoin mining. Apparently, okay. they've invested half a billion dollars into Bitcoin mining operations uh, that are going to be in Latin America, specifically El Salvador. So obviously volcanoes. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we've heard a lot about mining Bitcoin, about mining BTC with volcanoes, haven't we? Yeah. Has it actually started? Or I have seen a few crypto documentary makers that have gone to El Salvador and filmed some videos of volcanoes. I'm not sure whether it's volcanoes mining Bitcoin or just volcanoes. Okay. I'll believe it when I see it. I, I have to see an actual mining rig powered by a volcano. Let's go. If any of you watching are based in El Salvador, drop us a comment and yeah. maybe we can come stay for a few days. We'll bring yeah. our camera crew and we'll just see what's going on. Yeah. Um, so uh, so this is, yeah, so Tether is uh, entering the Bitcoin mining space. Interesting time to do it, just ahead of the halving. Yes. He has spoken before about needing more diversity in the mining ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Paolo, I, I read an interview in 2013 where he was, 2023, where he was saying that there is a need for more diversity. So yeah, as, it, well, as in decentralization. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he made he made some interesting points when he was talking to DL News because sort of once upon a time, China mm -hmm. was the sort of center of the Bitcoin mining industry. I think there is still a fair bit of mining going on in China, yeah. um, largely thanks to sort of cheap electricity. Uh, but then it's kind of shifted to the US, especially after China sort of cracked down on, on crypto and crypto mining. Um, and obviously, if it's too concentrated in any one place, that is that is not decentralized enough. Mm -hmm. um, so Tether seems to be kind of bent on kind of decentralizing it a little more, moving it to sort of place in Latin America, Uruguay and Paraguay, as well as El Salvador, apparently. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, if we uh, if we do if Tether does manage to decentralize that, I think that would be only a good thing. I did see a quote from Paolo as well, which said. We are not in a hurry to become the largest miner in the world. I'm okay. like, so that does mean your intention is to become the largest <laughs> miner in the world, just not under a strict time constraint. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We don't want to do it tomorrow, but we will do it. Well, they certainly have the profits to be able to roll it out. Was yeah. their Q4 profits for 2023 absolutely ridiculous? Mind melting. Like, five, I think it was $5 billion or something. Yeah. Tether made more in the last quarter of 2023 than Goldman Sachs did. Yes, and, and JP Morgan. And, <laughs> and Tether insane. has less than 50 employees. I think that's really? the, also the most remarkable thing about it. That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Um, yeah, so uh, Tether sitting on some absolutely gigantic profits. Mm -hmm. um, so are uh, sort of starting to move them around into very, because they announced that they were going to be buying BTC, didn't they? 
spending yeah. a certain percentage of their month of their monthly or quarterly profits or whatever it was on buying BTC. I'm not sure if we actually know for sure how much how much BTC they've bought, um, but you would imagine it's a fair bit. Mm -hmm. It's a fair bit. So uh, presumably, presumably in some way, therefore, USDT is partly backed by BTC. Well, lots of questions, and let's see <laughs> if there's ever a chance for you to be able to pick brains yeah. and find out. Yeah, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to ask Paolo that question mm -hmm. at some point. Um, now, I want to quickly stick with Tether just a little bit more. I know we've talked about it quite a lot, but it is fascinating. This was another uh, article I saw in DL News. Um, Stablecoins have seen uh, just this just in the last month, just in April. Yeah, and bear in mind we're only just over a week into it. Um, Stablecoins have seen $4.2 billion of growth. Wow. Which is pretty incredible for just, you know, uh, for, for this month alone. Um, uh, this is the quote from the DL News article. I thought this was quite interesting. The rate of new stablecoin creation is now at its highest level since early 2022, and it's showing no signs of slowing. Um, Tether is leading the way on that. Over 50% of the new stablecoins created this month or USDT. Yeah. Yeah. And mostly on Tron. I'm not so surprised that it's a tether dominated story when it comes to stable coins. Yeah. Actually, I think that's something that. Yeah. But that is interesting. It just shows how the, the industry is really moving forward with a lot of people positioning themselves to hop into crypto. It's a very, very bullish sign for the amount of capital available for deployment to roll out. Yeah. When the time is right. Okay, so that's Tether Stablecoins. Dre5110, hello all. Sorry I'm late on parade. Dre, we forgive you. It's okay. It's okay. But next time, please be absolutely bang on time. We don't want, we don't, <laughs> we don't want to get into the habit. Um, okay, uh, a few people mentioning uh, Gary is saying World Mobile deploying big in northern Nevada, whilst Joe Pham says can't wait uh, for the AMA with World Mobile. Ooh. Yes, yeah, so the World Mobile team, I believe some of them will be here for Token 2049 mm -hmm. next week. And we are in talks about the scheduling of the AMA, um, but we have not yet confirmed a date. That will be first announced on our Discord. So if you guys do want to follow, I'm sure the link will be in the description so you guys can follow it there. But if you are interested in DPIN, we actually have an AMA this evening with Peak, who is focusing a layer one on... Um, RWAs and DPIN. So that's going to be really interesting. They have their main net coming soon. They've just raised 5 million. So mm. it'll be a very interesting conversation to discuss. Yeah. Peak is a really interesting project. Coin Bureau is actually invested in Peak, I should say. Um, so uh, yeah, very interested to hear what the guys have to say about that. Our Coin Bureau Club, our CBC members, um, have been tabling some questions uh, for the guys at Peak. Um, so do tune into that. We will leave a link down below. It's a, it's on Discord. Yes. Did you mention that? Yeah. On Discord. And on I Discord. will be asking the questions. So just ping me the questions while we're on the call. There's a nice little chat box and I monitor them and ask away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's tonight. Uh, that is later. Well, later on today, depending mm -hmm. on where you are. Um, that is the Discord AMA with Peak. Uh, so we've covered Tether. We've covered TonCoin. What's up next? Okay, so 15th of April. As you guys know, the halving countdown is expected to be around the 19th of April, but that is not all. They had to throw another possible spanner in the works and another possible price catalyst. That is the potential possible approval of the Hong Kong Bot Bitcoin ETS, Ooh. which we could likely see the first batch of approvals on the 15th of April. Ooh. Interesting. So at okay. least for Hong Kong and mainland China, um, Asset managers have submitted applications and are waiting approval. So just to give a little bit of a scope, the approvals are set to be announced or confirmed around the 15th of April, and then it will take roughly 10 days to two weeks before we can actually see them live and accepting the inflows in. Um, and it'll be the first, it'll make Hong Kong the first place in Asia to really offer spot Bitcoin ETF products. Um, and it's actually been much sooner than industry expectations. People had on their 2024, bingo calendar for the crypto industry by the end of the year. So the fact that we have seen some people mention April as a deadline mm. is sooner than expected. Now, there's a few reasons why I think this could be a really interesting one. First of all, two of the applications that we have seen have actually obtained approvals last month to manage portfolios that accept more than 10% of their portfolio in virtual assets. 
which is kind of laying the land for being a very crypto friendly asset manager in the first place. Those two applicants, their parent companies are the biggest mutual fund firms out of China. Each wow. of those managing over one trillion yuan, which is $138 billion worth of crypto. Wow. Okay. Not sorry, not of crypto, just full stop. Okay. <laughs> I just got excited. I just got carried away, guys. Um, soon, no doubt. Soon, soon. Soon, possibly. Watch this space. Yeah. Um, and Eric Balkunis, who is the Bloomberg ETF expert, have said that um, the Hong Kong ETFs would also allow in-kind creations where you can essentially settle the portfolio rebalances in-kind rather than send the securities back for cash, which would essentially hopefully reduce some of the volatility that we have seen from inflows versus outflows from the likes of the US spot Bitcoin ETFs. Okay. Yeah, so it could be a really big game changer for the lay of the land when it comes to observing. Also, we've seen that Hong Kong is a fairly crypto friendly um, place. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because um, we saw those sort of uh, we saw those crypto regulations come in in Hong Kong last year, didn't we? Yeah. And since then, it's been sort of fairly quiet, but it does. There is this sense that mm -hmm. sort of, you know, there's the kind of excitement building around crypto in that area. And I mean, I hear sort of on the grapevine, so to speak, that crypto is still massive in China, yeah. for instance, you know. And uh, I, I mean, there was that figure not so long ago, wasn't there, that a huge amount of Binance's revenues Stuff were coming China. from China. Yeah. And it's like there, there was an interesting article in Coindesk not so long ago, um, where by Emily Parker, where she sort of pointed out that like this idea that China has banned crypto mm -hmm. is is not is not necessarily yeah. true. It's a it's it's kind of a bit more nuanced than that. It's mm -hmm. like it's sort of tolerated. You can't be. It's not as sort of openly out there as it is in other countries. Yeah, correct. Right. Um, but it's not actually completely illegal. You know, you won't be thrown in jail in China. For, for using crypto. Yes. Um, and also, yeah. I think what's interesting about these um, spot Bitcoin ETFs that we could see from Hong Kong very soon is even if we see a tiny percentage of Chinese investors that are able to find a legal way to invest in Bitcoin, that could be really significant for, for the industry. Mm. So it'll be a really interesting one to see how that plays out and also how the appetite is in the first few weeks. Also, if we recall looking at these spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US, the first few weeks really were just investors getting a little bit of a lay of the land before things really started heating up. So we'll have to have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. So the CPI, I'm still trying to find the CPI data. Annoyingly, the, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics are quite sort of sluggish about publishing it. Um, but, oh, here we are. Um, CPI for all items rose 0.4% in March, shelter and gasoline up. Mm. So that CPI has come in uh, hotter than expected, uh, which suggests that inflation is still you know, is still more of a problem. That is the reason, folks, why crypto is taking a bit of a tumble at the moment, because it just makes those, perhaps you could say, arguably, it makes those rate hikes, uh, rate cuts, I should say, uh, a little less likely. Um, I think the next Fed meeting is the 1st of May. Uh, so, I don't know, a lot can happen uh, between then, but that seems to be the reason why crypto is taking a dip at the moment. Um, but it's interesting looking at the comments, like half of half the people sort of commenting on the dip are sort of, oh, no, crypto's dipping. Uh, and the other half are like, yes, keep going, keep going down I so I can buy more. <laughs> um, uh, Ken says hopes for a rate cut in June is practically gone. I'm not I'm not certain about that. Let's see. But uh, yeah, it could um, uh, it could certainly slow things down a bit where rate cut is concerned. And that ties into what I was talking about, liquidity in relation to all the stuff that Arthur Hayes has been saying. You know, again, rate cuts equal more liquidity, you know, more money flooding into yeah. the economy. Um, and that means that money can eventually find its way into things like crypto and other risk assets. Um, yeah, Kakar says, keep going down, I want lower. The glee. <laughs> It's <laughs> maybe we need to do another remix of your crypto guy song, Keep Going Higher to Keep Going Lower. Because yeah. I quite like the positive sentiment around a market retracement. Yeah. It's giving a little bit of a positive um enforcement. Positive vibe. It's good yeah. to see good to see people, you know, you can tell there are so many hardened crypto veterans here 
people who no longer panic when they see when they see a dip. It's more like, yes, dip more, <laughs> dip more, <laughs> keep dipping. Um, OK, so uh, that was um, so that was uh, Hong Kong. Hong, Hong Kong, Kong spot Bitcoin ETFs. Let flip it over to the other side of the world, the US spot Bitcoin ETFs, because they're also buying the dip. Spot Bitcoin ETFs broke past $200 billion. Wow. And trade volume has nearly doubled in the last month. Just for some context for how things have been picking up, like what I said with the Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETFs, it might may take a few weeks for things to start to heat up. The total that the, the trade volume for the spot Bitcoin ETFs in March, on March the 8th, hit 100 um, billion. And since then, it has broke to 200 billion in just a month. So wow. this has been the month where it's been hitting all time highs. Um, and overall flows have slowed down. The peak net inflow of one, uh, 1 billion was on March the 12th, the same time as the all time high for Bitcoin. Yeah. So people were getting in there. People are getting in there. And yeah, as General H2K says, the ETFs are insane, the amount of money they have. Yeah. Yeah. This is why everyone was getting so excited, wasn't it? I did see a few people uh, sort of when when spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US were sort of still being talked about as will they, won't they? A few people saying, well, does it matter? You know, there are there are, there were sp there have been spot Bitcoin ETFs in other countries like Canada and Brazil, I think, have had spot Bitcoin mm -hmm. ETFs for quite a long time. I actually met at the Bitcoin conference in 2022. I met the guy who had uh, basically sort of created and sort of shepherded the uh, Brazilian spot Bitcoin. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I thanked him for his contribution. Oh, very uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he I'm sure he was delighted. Um, so, uh, yeah, but a lot of people were kind of questioning it. And there is there is your answer, folks. You know, that is just and I know a lot of people as well kind of say, well, you guys focus a lot on the US, mm -hmm. you know, and um, when there are huge markets like Asia, you know, when crypto adoption is massive, particularly in Asian countries, uh, but also in lots of African and Middle Eastern countries as well, um, South American countries too you know there's there's crypto adoption happening in so many places that are not the us and yeah. i entirely agree with with everyone who says that the thing is the us is just where so much of the money and still the influence is there does seem to be quite mm -hmm. a brain drain of crypto people I've yes. th i'm seeing a lot of tweets saying you know all the conversations i'm having with crypto builders I'm, you know, talking to people who are in Dubai or, or Singapore or, you know, even the UK and things like that. Yeah. Not so much the US anymore. But unfortunately, it's just, you know, US monetary policy is what is the tune we all kind of dance to. Yeah. Money and power speaks. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Um, OK, so what's next on the on the agenda? Well, I thought we were touch in because one of the things that we have been keeping an eye on is the conferences that are going on around the world at the moment. So at the moment, there's Paris Blockchain Week is mm -hmm. going on. If any of you guys are in Paris and have attended any of the days, I think it started yesterday, do let us know in the comments because I'm always curious when we don't make it over to a conference. I'm curious to see how it is. I'm curious to see what announcements have come out. We haven't seen that many announcements yet from Paris Blockchain Week. It might be because things are still warming up. Maybe the first round of talks starts today. Mm -hmm. However, Sui, 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 thank you, apologies, Dan corrected, Sui had their base camp in Paris this week too, and there was two fairly interesting announcements that came out. So the first one was that Hong Kong-based um, stablecoin, FDUSD, which is a $3.3 .3 billion stablecoin, is expanding to the Sui blockchain. It's already available on ETH and BNB, um, but it's looking at expanding further into the DeFi space. So that was one of the announcements that came out at SUI Basecamp. Um, and so for SUI users as well, if you are using that blockchain, it's also interesting because it means previously, if you were a user, you would have had to bridge and transfer tokens from other rails, um, which obviously, as you guys know, can incur costs and also can have some risks attached to it. So this should make the kind of mitigating of funds and the movement of funds a little bit more easy and cost effective for you guys. Um, and it's just an interesting bridge and collaboration, the fourth largest stable coin to make that partnership with SWE. Yeah. It's it. Well, I mean, I guess for any layer one ecosystem, integrating, you know, getting stable coin integration means yeah. 
liquidity mm -hmm. again, doesn't it? Means uh, increased activity. So that's that's good news for Sweet. What what else have they announced? Well, this was the more exciting one. This is for the one that's a little bit for the fans of the gamers out there. Sui released a handheld Web3 gaming device that lets you play both Web2 and Web3 games. Okay. I've added the link here, so if you want to share it with the guys, maybe they can have a little bit of a look. You can let yes. us know what you think. Um, but it's called the Sui Play OX1, and it's a handheld device. There's a few interesting elements. So first of all, thing that stood out, the slogan, play, earn rewards, and own your own assets. So it lets you bridge assets and also enforces royalties. Now, one thing that I like about this, I have to say, is the fact that in 2021 bull market cycle, the Web3 games looked, pardon my French, a little bit shit. <laughs> the Web3 yeah, so games we, we, the, <laughs> we're simple, um, and the, the Metaverse games, they weren't as snazzy and enticing as they could be. This, this looks pretty cool. Play your, yeah, play your existing PC and mobile games. Yeah. So, so this is a kind of, this is, uh, this is a kind of branded thing, isn't it? Like this is a Sui branded yeah. uh, device. I, it shows how old I am. I'm li I've literally never heard of a Playtron. Powered by Playtron. Powered by Playtron. You've got the voice for it, though. You could be one of those EA Sports. It's in the game. Yeah. If uh, Well, if EA Sports or any other um, <laughs> gaming company need a voiceover, you know where to come. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, I mean, this is this is a bit of, uh, of crypto hardware, yeah. if you like. Now... I guess the I guess the thing that springs to mind is the Solana phone, the saga, which did sell out when yeah. meme coins popped off. <laughs> so we can talk all we want about Solana phone being a flop, but then all of a sudden you added some bonk airdrops into the phone, and people were selling it on eBay for three times the retail price. Yeah, and I would say if you were to open this device, this handheld little gamey thingy, I'm also not a gamer too, so. Apologies to any of you gamers listening. If you were to open this on Christmas Day and you don't know about crypto, you don't need to. All you have to know is earn rewards. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I'm not particularly surprised that Sui have come out with something like this because the team was so heavily involved in Meta. So yeah. the team were really big on these kind of um, products and social networks and scalable platforms that people like to use that have a strong UX and UI. So I'm not surprised that this is something that they are wanting to help people integrate the SWE network into their, into their ecosystem. What better way to onboard someone into a specific crypto blockchain than to give them a little gaming device and they can earn some little points and tokens. Yeah. Yeah. I've said this before. I think, you know, a big, a big part of, of crypto becoming mainstream of, of mass adoption is people not knowing that they're dealing with crypto. Yeah. That they're not, and and I guess this is the case with this uh, with this Sui sort of thingy. Like it doesn't really matter whether it's on Sui or you know uh, Aptos or Near or any other you know layer one blockchain. Yeah. What matters is to most people is that it's a cool device that works and you can play cool games and as you say like earn rewards. People will be on board with that first and foremost. Like it's only a few crypto nerds will go, oh, wow, it's a, it's a Sui device or whatever, or it's, yeah. you know, it's partnered with Sui in some way. I'm like, guy, it's a Sui Play OX one handheld web for gaming yeah. device. Don't have <laughs> a thingy. Do you realize how awesome this blockchain is? It's amazing. It's, it's some of the guys behind Meta. They, 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 were, they were working on Libra, which then renamed to DM. And they'd just be like, yeah, I don't care. Is it Just let is me it play cool? and let me earn some points that yeah. I can translate into monies. Yeah. So uh, good news for good news for Sui. I should I should uh, state for the record that I hold some Sui. Me just too. You too. As you as well. Transparency. Mm. Miss Sui three. Um, but if you are looking to learn more about Sui, we actually had an AMA on Discord a few weeks ago with Adne, who's one of the co-founders, and he gave some insights into because he actually took quite a. It was it was a hot seat. There was a lot of you guys asking questions. They yeah. were coming in thick and thin, and he was asking he was answering them on demand he was doing excellent so that's a really insightful look from one of the founders directly into the objectives and goals of sui as a network as an ecosystem and i would definitely advise if you're thinking about maybe diversifying or adding sui to your portfolio give that a listen that recording is on the discord mm -hmm. great uh kenny kenny carniel is saying are you saying crypto adds a stigma to it no of course not no of course not it's extremely popular and has a wonderful reputation amongst most people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay, uh, Crackdown148, did you guys read about the ore mining frenzy on Solana? 
No. I have did you? not either. No. No. Or mining. No. I'm trying to think whether that's something whether that's a comment that's designed to be read out and for me to actually be saying something extremely rude. But I don't think it is. Made uh, some sweet gains mining on Raspberry Pi. Wow. Are you is this real? Yeah, you can. Yeah, well, mining on a Raspberry Pi. Oh, I thought it was just sweet gains. I thought it was like a little zip. <laughs> I know, I wasn't really sure what was going. Maybe, maybe. Um, okay. Oh, Douglas Baker's back. I'm expecting a lot from near Sui and Say when things heat up again. Oh, yeah, I don't. I think I don't think you're alone there, Douglas. Um, okay. Or is the reason for the lags and failed transactions on Sol? Okay. So is is or oh god, is or a meme coin? Gonna have to look this up. We were going to play a game at the end of today where we were going to read off funny meme coins and giggle while trying to <laughs> keep a straight face, but we actually didn't get around to it. If you guys would like to see it, it's probably not got much informative value, but it could be fun to watch. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Gosh, we're is... just we're struggling to keep up. It's because we're millennials. Yeah, the Gen Zers will be Gen Zers will have already mined all and done. I, I'm try, I'm seeing several ores. On, uh, on on coin gecko oh right maybe it's this one the one that costs the one that's 268 dollars with uh Bye. with less than half a million dollars of 24 hour trading volume i just don't know it's so difficult to keep up um okay so uh kenny says thanks for pronouncing my name correct i thought i i thought i'd messed it up kenny i'm sorry um but uh well that's great okay what's next I think that's it. Is that, is that it? Oh, we also, you had an interesting article you'd found about oh, yeah. Beast and Western Union, which we can maybe summarize with because it's yeah. showing the other side of YouTubers. Okay. Yeah. Let me, um, let me share this one with you because I thought this was quite interesting. I saw this earlier today. This is an article in The Spectator. I don't know. The Spectator is a sort of UK uh, magazine, sort of, you know, political commentary, culture, all that sort of stuff. But they had... Um, uh, they had an article uh, called The Problem with Mr. Beast. Now, obviously, Mr. Beast, biggest YouTuber in the world, business empire and stuff. Um, but what was interesting was that they pointed out that uh, he is sponsored by, among other among other things, Western Union. Mm -hmm. um, now, Western Union, I'm sure you all know this massive remittance company. We have talked about them in videos before. I mean, um, Western Union, they do a heck of, they move a heck of a lot of money. Yeah. Around and they the charge world. a heck of a lot in fees. For a lot of people that were looking to get on board in crypto is one of their reasons why and incentives in, you know, 2016 and 17, a lot of it was remittances and the fees that big companies like Western Union will charge. Yeah. And how it's fundamentally unfair for the people that need it the most. Yeah. So here's a quote from this article, which I thought was fascinating. Western Union is the undisputed king of the remittance market, which facilitates up to one in five dollars sent globally. Wow. and controls around 40% of all remittance payouts on the continent, that is Africa. In Algeria, nearly 80% of remittances are sent by a Western Union. In Namibia, half of all money coming into the country is sent through the company. So, yeah, um, it deals with a lot. A 2014 report, moving on, uh, by the Overseas Development Institute, revealed that Western Union artificially increases its fees for money transfers on the continent, Africa, resulting in what is known as an Africa charge of 8%. Wow. So if, 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 a, guy from, if a guy from Africa, if a guy from, say, Senegal, yeah. was working in the United States and sent $100 via Western Union back to his family in, in Senegal, he would pay $8 for the privilege. That's, that is crazy. Yeah. Certain regions, according to report, these fees can reach as high as 10% or more. Um, and this just got me thinking because obviously, you know, this is a problem. I know this is a bit of a cliche, but this is a problem that crypto fixes. Yeah. Um, this is why crypto has taken off or one of many reasons why crypto has taken off in so many, uh, in so many countries across the world. And it's no coincidence uh, that a lot of these countries rely to a very large extent, in some cases, on remittance payments from abroad. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've talked as well on the channel, sort of in various videos, about how payments is in, in you know, payments and stable coins in particular are kind of, in a way, crypto's killer use case yeah. at the moment. And this is a market that is not only, you know, sort of ripe for disruption, um, but by right, you know, if they're charging eight to ten percent, should damn well be disrupted. Um, yeah. because okay, you know, gas fees on Ethereum 
may be absolutely ridiculous. But if someone can send USDT via Tron or via Solana or via you know uh, another another L1 for you know maybe a few pennies or a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. that is a huge difference from paying eight to ten percent. Yeah, crazy. Um, so there and uh, yeah, I think the sooner you know the sooner crypto adoption takes off for you know uh, because remittance payments I think was one of the earliest you know the earliest use cases of crypto and I'm I'm kind of amazed that it's that they haven't managed that crypto hasn't managed to disrupt that sector yeah. as much I mean obviously that report that I'm talking about was 2014 but you would imagine the Western Union is still doing a lot of business I'd be very curious to know just how worried they are about crypto and its and its potential to disrupt mm -hmm. that market because like I say that market should should be disrupted. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, rant over. Good. That was a good that was a good final <laughs> look to end in. Why we're all in the industry, why we all care about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um uh we've got a uh, love from Wales. Aww, How would you, you pronounce Lyon. that? Sorry, I Yayan? Yayan. Yayan. Welsh names are Welsh names are crazy. Um Riley Wayway says hello from Galway, Ireland. Beautiful. Um Lots of people talking about Ada. <laughs> um, and uh, Patrick Silver says, this is why crypto is being attacked. Quite possibly, yeah, yeah. quite possibly, because it is threatening to disrupt um, disrupt these big established companies, mm -hmm. you know, slow their gravy train. The quicker it happens, the better. Um, uh, someone is asking, why is Solana just down? I mean, Solana's been, Solana's been <laughs> slow for the past few days, isn't it? Meme coins, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Jess, uh, so we're going to be at Token next week. Yes, so next week actually starts with a Cosmos event that you and oh, yeah. Nick will be attending on the Tuesday, I believe. Okay. On the Wednesday, we'll be having a small little Dubai meetup, so make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter so you can see a little bit of the behind the scenes. We will take as many snaps as possible to give you guys an update. And then Thursday and Friday will be Token 2049. We also have some pretty interesting interviews lined up. So if you're not yet a member of our Discord, do make sure to do so because we will be taking some questions from you guys and incorporating them into some possible interviews that we have coming up, which yep. are very exciting. So that's why I say is follow us on socials to keep a closer eye as things unfold. But it's set to be quite a busy week. Very busy week. Um, so we're not quite sure whether we'll be going live at the same time next week. That's correct. We may have to, uh, we may have to push next week's Wednesday live stream back maybe to Friday mm -hmm. if we're not too uh, if we're not too exhausted after a long week um but yeah as Jess says there's lots of stuff happening we're going to be at lots of sort of various events talking to lots of cool people um and we will let you know what the vibe from token 2049 is when we went uh when I went in um September last year yeah uh to the event in Singapore it was a real eye-opener I think that was for me a bit of a turning point in that I suddenly saw you know I came back way more bullish uh, than I'd been before I left. So with a bit of luck, this one in Dubai is going to make me even more bullish. Time of the halving as well. So it's just going to be a bullish week. It's yeah. just going to be, it's going to be exciting, guys. Yeah, yeah. So keep a look out next week, guys. Lots to come. We will keep you posted about when the next live stream will be. NFA, I think, is happening tomorrow, but I'm not quite sure the format. Uh, I think it may be on Ben's channel, but I'll have to double check. We'll keep you posted. Um, and uh, yeah, lots more content coming your way besides. Jess, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak guy. Eid Mubarak to all of you guys watching. Uh, have a happy Eid if you're celebrating. Um, and if not, just have a happy rest of the week. We will see you again very soon. Goodbye. Okay. And...